everybody, welcome to another recording from Hair of the Dog. I'm Nicole, and um, today we're going to look at editing a black dog in white snow. So we'll totally reset this image, and this is the image that I had straight out of camera. Um, you can see it's not too bad, but you can see the snow is a little bit gray and the dog's pretty dark, so I want to bring out some detail in the dog and whiten that snow. The lighting for this shot was an overcast, cloudy day as many of our winter days are here in Pittsburgh. Um, so it wasn't as challenging. If I was doing the session that was going to be full sun, I would have definitely brought some additional lighting on because a dark dog on um, bright white snow in the sun with that snow being bright in the sunshine would be very, very hard to um, properly photograph without some additional lighting. Um, so if you are photographing a dark dog in snow, Make sure it's a little bit cloudy or super early in the morning or later in the evening if you're not going to have additional lighting because it would be challenging, especially because there's very few uh, open shade areas since there are no leaves on the trees anywhere. Um, but anyway, this is my straight out of camera. And the first thing I'm going to do is kind of just double check my white balance. This little eyedropper tool is a, kind of an automatic uh, white balance adjustment that you should put on a neutral target so something that's gray, black, or white and the snow should be white. So it'll kind of, you know, make it a little bit better there. Just pulled it down um, to 6500 Calvin and uh, it was at like 6800 so it was pretty close. I use an Expo disc for most of my shooting that gets me 95% of the way there and then I usually also use a gray card um, that will fine tune it. Sometimes I still have to adjust it a little bit, but it gets me pretty close, and I much prefer that than having to eyeball it because um, it's hard to really train your eye to see it exactly right on the first time because our eye will be different every day a little bit. Um, so you might edit what looks great one day and come back the next day and be, oh, that's really yellow or oh, that's really blue. So that's why I prefer to use those tools to, to help me get even closer, and then I just tweak it according to taste. So. Um, moving on a little bit, the first thing um, I do, and I'm going to edit this pretty much in the same way that I edit almost all of my images, a really clean, vibrant, easy edit. I don't do a lot of uh, heavy editing or actions or presets or things like that. I'm going to bump the exposure up just a touch, like 0.3. Um, I usually never ever touch this contrast. I make my contrast by using these sliders down here in the tone curve. So I'm going to bump the highlights up a little bit just to kind of make that snow a little brighter, bring those whites up. Now shadows is very helpful when shooting black dogs. You can pull the shadows up and it really brings a lot more detail to him. You need to be careful not to pull it up too far, obviously. Um, and if you want things to get a little darker, you can pull those shadows down. So I'm going to pull it up just a little bit here. One thing to notice, he's not bad, but dogs with really shiny black fur if you pull the shadows up, a lot of the fur might come up, but you might have spots where it stays really dark um, just because of how that black fur photographs. So that's just something to be watch out for. Um, and you, the best way to fix that is really by lighting it correctly in the first place so you don't have to pull the slider up much. So I'm just going to pull it up a little bit, like plus, plus 15. Um, white side pulled up a little to plus 13, and I'm not exact. Somewhere between the 10 and 15 range. It, your client's not going to be able to tell the difference between plus 12 and plus 13, so don't beat yourself up about it. Just um, just make a slight adjustment. And then I'm going to pull blacks down a little bit. You can see the blacks will pull all that dark area down. I don't want to pull it down too far where you lose detail in the fur, but I do want to pull it down enough just to get a little bit more contrast. Vibrance, I bump up a touch outside. It's not really a lot in this um, since it's so black and white. Uh, but that's okay, I'll do that anyway. Oh, not saturation. And clarity, I sometimes bump up just a touch, like 0.6, under 10. Not a lot, because it can look pretty fake pretty quickly. And then I'll go over to the turn curve and just pull up on these two quadrants to kind of brighten the whites and pull those blacks down. Really, really, really slight. It's like plus 3, minus 4, hardly ever anywhere near or above 10. It just adds just a little bit of, of extra... You can see it's really, really slight, just a little bit of extra pop. And you can adjust a little bit more down here, too. Um, so that's about it. And I do need to crop. I'm going to pull down. There we go. So he's on that top quadrant PowerPoint. And that's about it. We are ready to go. And this is what I would show my client. 
Um, I would not take the leash out yet. I wait till after my sales session to remove leashes of ordered images because I don't want to remove leashes of images that the client's uh, not going to purchase. I think they'll probably purchase this one though because that's a pretty darn cute face. Um, and the other thing I might do in Photoshop after this is purchased is just brighten those eyes a little bit for the final print. But that is about it. I hope you found this helpful and I hope you can um, use some of these techniques when photographing dark dogs, uh, not just in snow, but anywhere. And um, check back on Hair of the Dog blog for more tutorials for pet photography businesses and shooting. And happy shooting. Thanks.